This is David Prosper, host of The Leadership Revolution. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast from Public House Media. Hello. Hey, man. What's going on? Hey, Jay. What's up, man? You ready to talk movies? I'm ready to talk movies. Let's do it. Welcome to another episode of Fear and There, the horror movie podcast where two friends make you listen to a conversation about a horror movie we may or may not like. I'm Jay calling in (laughs) from the Astoria neighborhood of New York City. And this is Zachary calling in from the Beacon part of Beacon, New York. (laughs) (laughs) Lovely, lovely. The Beacon part of Beacon, New York. That's nice. I, I have visited your home finally and it is a very pleasant home. Oh, thank you for saying so. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. We were waiting to get your opinion on the matter. And uh, now that we know that you like it, we're going to redesign everything, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that makes sense. You you live to make me uncomfortable. So um, that's right. Sounds like a really good opportunity for you. Um, Well, this episode's an interesting one. We are uh, talking about the 2019 Spanish horror film, courtesy of Netflix, called uh, The Platform. So before we hop in, you mentioned before we started recording that you're drinking a very nice scotch. Would you like to tell the good folks at home about it? Oh, I am drinking a very nice scotch. I'm drinking a Balvenie. Uh, I, I actually, that's all I have to say. It's a Balvenie. I don't remember what year it is. I think it's a, it's the standard Balvenie mm-hmm. uh, age. Um, but anyway, the reason why, and I was telling you this before we started recording, is that Mandy and I were supposed to have a, a, a relatively large wedding Um well, four months ago, actually four months ago today, I believe. And then we rescheduled mm-hmm. it for November and then we rescheduled it for next May. And then we officially canceled it. <laughs> and we, Sorry, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't I, laugh at that, but it is a real, <laughs> a real fucking roller coaster. <laughs> well, I, it's uh, exactly. No, it, 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 laughing is nice. Laughing. You, it's, it's better to laugh than, you know, I don't know. Where's that Simpson? There was a, there's a grandpa Simpson headline in a newspaper in a Simpsons episode. It's old man yells at cloud. That's how I felt. <laughs> since March. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and we actually, we got our deposit back on our venue, which was, I mean, I don't know, in the middle of the like wedding industrial complex that is just drowning in greed and opportunism and manipulation. The fact that we had a proprietor uh, who gave us like 93% or, or something of our deposit back. Mm-hmm. Because he felt that it was fair to do so, given the state of things, I, is nothing short of miraculous. And so I celebrated by buying a bottle of scotch. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Well, that's, that's, I mean, that's a good reason. And I think that's a nice celebratory item. Um, what Bal- are you drinking? Balvenie's nice. Uh, I am drinking nice. a, uh, a, uh, a glass of Elijah Craig whiskey. It's a bourbon. Ooh. It's a Kentucky straight bourbon. Um, it's actually the last, the last little bit left in, uh, in the bottle. So, uh, Oh, that's sad. Che- cheers to everyone. Yeah. Cheers. L'chaim to all of our, to all of our friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, partway through the podcast, I will probably pour myself this, uh, this six point, uh, sweet action IPA, but, um, it's a downgrade, but that's okay. You yeah. Can, yeah it's good enough. It's, it'll be a refreshing back half of the podcast for sure. Um, <laughs> So as I mentioned this uh this week week by week we are talking about Platform a Netflix film that is a Spanish language sort of um I would say dystopian uh high concept horror movie um that uh, came out in 2019 and um kind of flew a little under the radar when I first saw it come out um it was definitely something that a lot of people were talking about but then I think we started to get some some better quality movies coming out, and I think it kind of fell by the wayside. Um, and I haven't heard much about it since. And I think it was a good one for us to have watched for a few reasons, um, least of which is perhaps its message, um, or <laughs> or perhaps the method with which they got to the message. Um, and, and we can talk about that. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, so before we hop into the to, to the discussion section um 
what did you know about this film before you uh before you jumped into it oh nada i i had i had no context for this i had seen the uh movie poster um perhaps just on the like netflix you know the idle screensaver screen or or um or somewhere on the web on one of the movie websites or you know i I mean, I, I vaguely remember seeing that the Times covered it, you know, that they reviewed it, that uh, Jason Bailey reviewed it for the Times. And I actually went, uh, I, I want to talk a little bit. Well, we're going to get we're going to get to notions of this later. So I, actually, I'm just getting ahead of myself. But I, I, I had heard of it, I, but I, I knew nothing about it. I mean, mm-hmm. it, I was when I turned it on. I, I don't know if this was your experience, if this is people's experience generally. I've, I watched I've, I've seen a lot of foreign language films on Netflix, but this one, for some reason, started in the English dubbing. Um, I don't like that's a new, that, that's never happened to me before. So I, I didn't even know it was a Spanish language film. I, that, that's how little I knew about this film. And I was like, so this whole movie is fucked up, right? Like they didn't even have enough of a budget to like sync the audio. <laughs> um, and then I realized that it was, they were speaking a different language and I corrected it. But um, so, yeah, I mean, interesting. Okay. So, so, did you know anything about it before I read? Because this was one of my recommendations, something that I added on the old list. Um, did you know, had you heard of it prior to that or was your first experience hearing about it, me bringing it to you? Uh, no, uh, no, I had heard about it before. But really, when I say I'd heard about it, I mean that I had I had, I'd read the two that I'd read the title. <laughs> like, sure. that's it. Yeah. In fact, I thought it was the Dave Franco movie called The Rental for a little while. So that's it. Yeah. I mean, truth be told, the concept of this movie is very simple, but the synopsis of it, 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 the synopsis of it is correct. You know, it's like, it basically says a dystopian prison Mm -hmm. where people are fed via a platform and only the people at the higher levels get to eat first. Like, like that, that was very clear you know, Mm -hmm. and it was true. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't seen the movie, that doesn't really mean anything literally to you because it's, it's hard to envision what the hell they're talking about, like what that means, what that entails. So it's interesting that even if you had read the synopsis, it would not have really been any sort, it would not have added a whole lot of value, you know? No, I, I think that's, I think that's a good point. I mean, ultimately, what comprises the plot of this movie is actually just a set of rules about yeah. like yeah. what floor you're on and how often you change floors and who your roommate is and what you can and can't do yeah. and can yeah. you have the food with you or no. You know, it's like all of a sudden you're just a, you're just reading out a rule book and that suddenly becomes the plot of this film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Um Yeah, it is it is very sort of like uh that's what I'm looking for. It's very um procedural this movie um interesting yeah yeah um well, great. what was yeah. your context yeah i mean it, my context was you know the same it, it was just another one of those you know if you if you're on any sort of like the horror movie subreddit or on any forums talking about horror when it came out you know it's an easy to access netflix horror movie that is not in english you know so that has a, mm-hmm. some very you know that that already checks enough boxes that I think most people will be like, okay, I'll give this a shot. Um, so that was that was my context. Uh, I watched okay. it. I watched it in the dark in bed. So, uh, oh, so that's great. <laughs> a ten a tender domestic scene. I yeah, like it. It is a particularly despicable movie, subject matter wise. So, um, it's it's also disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's disgusting. Really gross. It's really gross. Um, well, great. I think that that uh, sends off the context. Did you just watch it on your couch like huge? Like <laughs> I did, like huge. Um, Mandy was uh, teaching a class upstairs, and so I had I had the whole downstairs to myself, and I shut off all the lights, and I and I pumped the volume on my uh, extremely muddy sounding sad bar that I spent too mm-hmm. much money on, and and there, and then and then off I went. Great. That sounds pretty yeah. standard. So pretty standard. Yeah, about as unsexy as can be. Yeah, <laughs> um, I was wearing lingerie though. I was wearing lingerie. I should add that. <laughs> was it like a bustier? It was. It was, and I had fuzzy pink slippers, like the you know, like a fembot. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a reference. That's a that. Can you cut that out? Frankly, I don't want to be. I'm, you don't, don't want an Austin. Pa- you don't want an Austin yeah. Powers reference in there. 
Yeah, you should just cut that out. I don't need to be someone associated with Austin Powers references you, you on know what, September 24th, 2020. <laughs> TBD. I'll let you know whether I... Uh, so <laughs> oh, before we, too much power. <laughs> before we build up that spoiler wall brick by brick, mm-hmm. um, what, uh, would, you, would you recommend this on the binary? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You? Uh, this movie is very hard to recommend. Uh, yeah. And I don't mean it's a bad movie right i wouldn't be able to say this is a bad movie you know it's not it's not like um i think you and i both unanimously decided in the tall grass was a bad movie (laughs) that was a bad movie right Right. right, right. this is not a bad movie i thought this is actually a very good movie that (laughs) has some (laughs) things that like that was bad. <laughs> well, that I don't that I don't want to look back on having said I recommend this movie. And then <laughs> people are like in some of these scenes thinking back to me like why did that sadistic son of a bitch recommend this movie? Um so okay. that is why. Uh if you are somebody who likes um kind of like grotesque horror films, you know, who likes pushing the gore boundaries and the the sort of psychological boundaries, then this might be worth a watch because it just sort of adds to that canon. Um, But in general, I would say no, a no from me, dog. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like when you ask me this question or I ask you this question, you know, about, about does this get your endorsement as a recommendation? It's like, I, I immediately think I probably overthink this, but I immediately think like, Okay, when in my life do I find myself in a position of giving a recommendation? Who am I giving a recommendation to? What is the subject matter? You know, what's the medium that I'm recommending? Or, or you know, in, in what medium am I recommending this piece of art? And, like, how many things can I recommend? So, like, for me, thinking about this film, it's like, okay, as a as somebody who, like, has a horror podcast and who has... I don't know. I mean, I, this doesn't, this isn't a proper credential. Like I, like I wouldn't list this on my, on, you know, as like a hero, I'm an expert on horror movie because, because I've done a dozen and a half horror podcast episodes. But like, if I had one horror movie to suggest to somebody, it would never be this movie. Ever. Oh, yeah, like there's yeah. no scenario in which it's this movie or like most of the movies that we've done. So like, yeah, I mean, I, it's hard to, it's hard to come to a point in which I can recommend Almost anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perhaps yeah, as I, evidence of my overthinking. Uh, yeah. yeah, I do think we should. Yeah, I think. I mean, you're, it's, you can answer that question however you want. That is your prerogative. You have free will. Um, but I do think the spirit of the recommendation doesn't have quite as much weight because it literally is like, <laughs> if if you would if you think that this movie is fifty one percent worth watching, then sure. you should recommend it. You know, and. What's challenging right, about right, right. this is I think this movie is 80% worth watching, but I think this movie is like 10% worth thinking about after the fact, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. And, I mean, and let's that say drags, like, that drags yeah. it down for me. It just, it just does not feel. Uh, you know, it doesn't it, have depth for yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it does. I, it puts, <laughs> Pun intended. It, it puts its depth on its sleeve in a way that isn't as charming as it has been in other films, I guess. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, I don't know. Yeah, if you're the sort of TV watcher who does not approach, or movie watcher who does not approach your next film in like a, in like a vaguely academic or like disciplined way, like I know all the movies that I want to see. You know, I have a list of 300 movies that I want to see. And when I sit down to watch a movie, I pick one of those movies. Yeah. But like, maybe you're the kind of movie watcher who doesn't care about what she's going to watch on any given night. And you just sit down on the couch and you scroll through the infinite tiles of Netflix and this catches your eye. Then sure, there are worse ways to spend, I don't know, 95 minutes or whatever this is. Yeah. I mean, this movie for for all of its other faults, it is fucking enthralling. I the whole time it it goes fast. Yeah, the whole time I was, like, in it, you know? Um, yeah, 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 right. But it's also, you know, I think we've we've arrived at the point here. Um, but yeah, yeah All right. I, I think we're Should both... We wallet? We're both in a negative, but with a, with a pretty generous asterisk on my end. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, let's put up that, uh, that there spoiler wall. So if you would like to go 
back and watch the movie and then come back and listen to the back half of the podcast, we will welcome you with open arms. So the spoiler <laughs> sawed wall. Sawed off arms. <laughs> sawed off arms, yeah. <laughs> the spoiler wall is going up now. <laughs> and here we are. That was so alarming. It's painful. It hurts, actually. Yeah. It's like physically, it's a physically repugnant thing that we do. This The spoiler wall? <laughs> I think yeah, it's it a hurts. generous it hurts. thing. Well, it's nah, a, it hurts. I mean, I have to ask you, have you gone back and listened to the spoiler wall like since I put like a I stupid sound effect that you made? A number of voice? times. Yeah, a number of times. Just making sure. Yeah, um, for yeah those, it's, really, for those who, it's really my legacy there. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, like episode maybe three or something we right i was like we should really have like a sound effect so that like if somebody's zoning out while they're listening to the podcast they like know <laughs> that the spoiler wall or something happened so it should just be like a whoosh or a sound effect and then you were like yeah pew, 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 pew. <laughs> and oh there it is that's the new I, one yeah and then i grabbed it and uh <laughs> and made it silly and now it is it doesn't say spoiler at all so you don't really know what the hell the sound effect is you have but, no idea you have no idea yeah um well here we are uh this movie oh my god um i don't even know where i mean i i had texted you uh you know we were we, we were kind of like fighting over which one of us had to host this episode um I think it was your week, and, and we we swapped. It was it because technically you're right. Yeah, I think there's a certain. This movie is 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 hard to. I, th- I guess what I'm saying when I'm saying it's hard to recommend, it's hard to be passionate about this movie, um, and and that's for a couple of reasons. One, it is physically detestable from like like a like a gross gore mm-hmm. subject matter perspective. Like it is really, right. it is really gross. And I, I, there are grosser movies out there for sure. This movie doesn't like triple down right. on it. Like some of those other films do, but I mean, this movie literally contains cannibalism, like mm-hmm. it, cannibalism, rape, necrophilia, like just a lot just, of knifing, stabbing. The blood, worst, blood, yeah, blood, 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 yeah, blood. the worst subjects that I really don't think we should talk about on this show. Um, yeah, I know, I'm with you. Nobody wants it. It doesn't. We don't need to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they could have like left a couple of those things out, and we still would have understood the key point they're getting across with these things is. They're trying to portray desperation and the worst of human nature. Like mm-hmm. that could have been done with like a shade of what they included on on screen. Um, and so some people really really like to to treat horror movies like a like a thrill ride. Um, and and a right. lot of people really need that extra bit of push to make the movie have the sort of like visceral gravity that they're looking for. Um, that's not me per se, but you know, I've seen really gross movies. So, um, for the, the fact that this one registers on my barometer is saying something, uh, right. <clears throat> so I wanted to get that out of the way. Cause I think that that's a key characteristic of this film is, um, grossness. Um, I think for the sake of this, because it's really easy to talk about to, it's really easy for me to synopsize the plot. Um, as you said, it is <laughs> very simple, very, very procedural and very high content. Mm -hmm. So, um, I figured I'd just run it down so that we could talk about it for people. Okay. Um, Go for it. This movie, you're, you basically are just dropped in. Some guy wakes up in a cell and, or wakes up in a concrete room specifically with another person across the way and a big square hole in the floor in between them. And you come to find out that they are in a prison that is essentially a massive tower type thing where, When you're in your cell, you are in your cell and you get to eat one time a day and you eat via this platform, hence the title, that goes slowly down from the top of the tower to the bottom of the tower. And it does not get replenished with food. So it starts full of food at the top on level one. And by the time it gets down to the very bottom, which you later learn is level 333... I, I mean, the significance of that, maybe we could talk about. I don't know. Um, mm. it, by the time it gets down to there, and, and frankly, by the time it gets past level like 60, there's no more food left. So right. um, the idea is if you're on the lower levels, you're shit out of luck and you're going to starve. But the hitch in this is every month, all the people shuffle. So you keep your roommate, but you wake up on a different level. So you could be on level 200 really hating your life and then wake up on level six. And so I think that that's the, 
the part of this movie that that makes it less desperate and makes it almost more of like a sadistic game show i don't know um and that's i mean that's the plot of the movie there's some some little idiosyncrasies that happen you know are you follow you follow one specific prisoner around the uh the whole movie his name is goreng um and uh he's kind of our protagonist and he cycles through a few roommates because of tragic ends. And, um, and that's, that's kind of the, the main plot of the film. Uh, Mm -hmm. obviously this movie is attempting to, I don't even want to call it a metaphor. It's, but it's attempting to represent class struggle and, um, uh, you know, att- attempting to talk about capitalism and how difficult it is to knock the people in power out of power when wealth is distributed in this manner. Um, and that's what the movie's trying to talk about, but it's almost not a metaphor because it is literally what is in this movie. The class structure of this prison is literally represented by what level you're on. So, <laughs> like, I guess it may have been cleaner had they even been more ambiguous and more kind of like symbolic about it. But they literally are like people in the real world who are struggling to make ends meet are struggling to put food on their table, literally. And (laughs) this movie is using people struggling to put food on their table as a metaphor for people struggling to put food on their table. (laughs) So it's like, I, <laughs> right, right, right. I think that's my number one problem with it. And, and, <laughs> and, and I think I, that's kind of what, how I wanted to pose this to you, Zach. I mean, I know, sure. you, I know your answer is, is this, I mean, we talk about, we use the <laughs> phrase ham fisted all the time in this, in, on this show. And I think this is probably the principal example of a movie that <laughs> was, I, I believe you were like, it might be worth talking about the the virtue of being subtle in a movie that was like a text you sent me or something <laughs> um and so i wanted to give you a you know a few minutes to yeah to talk through your thoughts on obviously this movie movie is not very subtle so um pulling meaning from it isn't very hard sure. how did, how did that sure. affect your viewing experience sure yeah no that's that's <laughs> definitely both a good question and also the question of this movie um Right. Like, first of all, I, I love the way that you you kind of, I think, per- perfectly encapsulate one of the limitations of allegory or, or of their or of their of their like chosen of the filmmakers chosen, you know, I don't know, milieu for an allegory. Right. That like you are trying that that he is clearly trying to represent something by showing that exact thing, which is which is sort of strange. And this, I don't know, destabilizingly postmodern and also maybe ineffectual, ultimately. Um, right. I mean, this is. This is a very explicit, in-your-face, bludgeon-you-over-the-head allegory about, right, like you said, kind of trip, trickle-down economics, sort of the, the fallacy of trickle-down economics, about uh, power imbalances, class imbalances, vis-a-vis capitalist um, you know, structures. And it is also, you know, in the, same, in the same breath, also an endorsement of a kind of democratic socialism. Um, it's very explicitly not a communist, uh, uh, an endorsement of communism. There's even a line, you know, <laughs> very, very beginning of the movie when, when Göring's, Göring's, uh, uh roommate asks him if he's a communist and he sort of spits at that. Right. So it's not, mm-hmm. it's, it, the movie refuses to go that far. No, 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 no. It's not about, it's not an endorsement of communism. It's an endorsement of something a little bit more, uh, temperate, more like democratic socialism, um, and it's a repudiation of like a capitalist trickle down economic system. Um, so I, I I do want to say one thing before I talk about like before I get into the notion of nuance and subtlety and messaging and that sort of thing in 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 film broadly. And it's just that this film, to me, I mean, I, and this is probably a, an arguable point, but my reading of this film is that it actually fails to do the very simple thing that it sets out to do, which is to, to be this kind of living, breathing out allegory for the failure of capitalism in capitalism, in real life, the people who are on top are always on top and they do not budge. And that's the problem that there is an, an extreme, extreme, unequal 
distribution of wealth in our country, in the United States. And the people who have consolidated that wealth, the so-called 1%, are not at risk of suddenly losing that money. In fact, they have so many safeguards. I mean, that's how we, that's how we work as a country is that we have infinite protections for the wealthy. We let the wealthy stay wealthy, and in fact, we let them get even wealthier. But this film fucks that whole concept up and and randomizes the uh, levels. So like you said in your synopsis, which I thought was really nicely articulated, and summarized, uh, every month the prisoners get reshuffled. So there is, like, yes, on one hand, there is this, like, really cruel kind of random uh, randomness, uh, so to speak, right? That, like, every month you wind up either really far ahead or really up top, really closer to the fresh, good food or at the bottom. So there's no sense of perpetrator and victim in this. There's no, like, it, like the metaphor immediately falls flat. Like, if you wanted to to make like the searing indictment of capitalism that I think this film wanted, you know, to make wanted to be, then it needed to have been like Bjorn. What's how do you say his, what's his name? I don't have my note in front of me. What's it's his name? Goring. I mean G O R E N G. I mean Goring. Goring. Okay. Yeah. Goring. Right. So so you needed to have Goring at a fixed position who then tries to exact change from his fixed position, but to have him shuffle around at random negates the point it's not what life is like you do not shuffle around at random once a month you do not suddenly collect of you know a hundred thousand dollar paycheck and then all of a sudden you're getting under minimum wage because you're like you know an undocumented immigrant or whatever it is right so uh, to me the metaphor fails almost from the get-go like that there was like a that there was like a a problem in the conceptualizing of it so that was one of my bigger issues with it yeah so so what's interesting that you so I, I think you're you're forming my thought on this a little more than I expected you to. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's, it's a good thing <laughs> for, for a change. Normally, I don't want your opinion anywhere near my brain. I know, um, which is a dumb thing for me to be the other guest on the, or the other host of this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but so that's a good point. I, I didn't even really connect that because I it, even if it was a clean, perfect metaphor, like – it's not a metaphor. It's literally, it's more, <laughs> right. It's a depiction more than a metaphor. Um, and right, right, right. But like setting that aside, your point is well taken because of the sort of, um, the sort of fluid nature of this construct of, of them switching floors so often, it kind of mm-hmm. opens the door for you to say, all right, well then what are they trying to say? Because that is a glaring enough issue that th- that the metaphor does fall apart a little. Now, I will say you could make a claim that this movie is trying to say the real people who are only on top ever are the government. Mm. Sure. Which isn't course, true. It, right. It, it's, in a way. Uh, it's opposite. It's like in, in America, at least, it's like the super PACs that run the government. So I don't really – like this, this is getting – we're getting into like political statements that I don't think either of us are qualified to do a podcast on, but also (laughs) it's, you know, not something I'm interested in talking about, Mm -hmm. but um, it could have been read in a different way. If you were shuffling around, like what are things that do have a finite moment of superiority and then you could lose it all? Like what, what things could that connect to? And, the thought is like political elections, maybe like when you're in power and then when you're out of power, like understanding another. Sure, not, not, not according to today's news where we had our, 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 our president refuse twice in, in a 24 hour cycle to peacefully give up the throne as it were, if he were to yeah, lose. Anyway, well, whatever. Let's yeah. yeah. That, again, yeah. I, Cut but, that so, but, but <laughs> and no matter what sort of smart, read that you would like to superimpose on this movie it does not let you do that because Mm -hmm. and and the reason is because it is so specifically about a hierarchy of class that Mm -hmm. it has to be read like 
a critique on capitalism and a critique on anything that isn't, as you said, mm-hmm. democratic social socialism. So mm-hmm. you can't read it another. I mean, you could, but you right. would, you would have to like you would have to like bridge some some gaps. Yeah, and deny certain parts right. of the movie. Um, so I mean, that's really interesting because it kind of shoots itself in the foot a little bit by being right. so cleanly about one thing. The thing that, right, exactly. Like a comparison that I was making in this movie is is this movie reminds me a lot of the Aronofsky Aronofsky film Mother. Um, yes, I had that. I had that feeling too. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's. I don't think either of us particularly loved Mother. Um, I thought Mother was also very over the top and very aggressive with its allegory, but it it at least chose to operate on within its framework in a way that wasn't directly about the thing that it was trying to represent. The difference it was there, room for interpretation. Yeah, correct. And so that's right, it, right. it's interesting because this movie, if if it hap- if it were a little more subtle. Right. Then, and then it it would have been more successful because it wasn't so aggressive, but also it would have opened it up for other interpretations. So right, right. Um, so interesting. Yeah. So like, so so when I finished watching this movie or the following day, I I you know I I just googled it and I googled you know I don't know the platform reviews and I scrolled through what showed up and which is not how I usually read reviews. I mean I you know I I, I use Letterbox and I use Metacritic, Rotten Tomato, whatever. But I, I did it through Google. And so many people were saying were making the same point. I, I suspect it's because one person published this, probably Bailey, Jason Bailey at the Times, because that's a you know a pretty well established mm-hmm. mm-hmm. paper. And and then everybody probably follows suit, is my guess. But people are saying like, okay, so this is exactly the movie of our times. Like this is the movie that perfectly encapsulates the zeitgeist. It is a movie that is over the top. But hey, we all, you know, we could really use an over the top movie right now because of the times that we're living in are really over the top and and kind of like advocating for a kind of artistry of this movie that comes out in the fact that it's so over the top that it's so that it so beats you over the head with its message that that actually because we're living in really intense crazy times, it's good to watch a movie that is really obviously over the top about a single thing. And it got me thinking about like the virtue of nuance, the virtue of subtlety in, in art and in, in film for our purposes, but in art just generally. And like, is there a time in which making a really obvious piece of art actually is, is good or, or, or lends itself to good art? Um, if that makes any sense. And I, I, I didn't, I honestly, I mean, this is, my feeling about it, and I'd love to hear what you think about this, but like, I disagree. <laughs> I like subtlety in art. I do not like being told what to think. I do not like polemical. I don't necessarily, I shouldn't say I do not like, like it's black and white for me. It's not, but I generally don't like really polemical pieces of art that are like, this is the argument that I'm making. And I'm going to tell you exactly what the argument is. All of, you know, every little piece of it and this is the and i'm gonna say it over and over again for an hour and a half and like that's what i yeah. want to do with my wow. with my voice i just don't like I, I i think the exact opposite of that is something that's completely obtuse that has that has almost nothing to grab grab onto and that that could be a failure in and of itself too but like i, I don't get it honestly like when people are like this is the movie we need right now yes it's over the top yes it's unsubtle yes it's in your face but so is life. So fucking deal with it. I just like that's not that doesn't mean anything yeah, to me. Yeah. I, I, so okay. So this, these are interesting points. I I do think it's important that we talk about the critical reception of this film because it is largely critically praised. Uh, right. 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 It, it has very good reviews, and I think a lot of people will agree that it is a good film in a lot of ways. Technically performances are pretty great um sure yeah so i do think we should spend the back half of our discussion section maybe right after we put a bow on this sort of subtlety and mm-hmm. art point um we should talk about what we liked about the film because i i do think yeah you I, i'm I, with you yep. yeah you and i tend to be plagued by this and you a little bit more than me um i often find myself having to be the de facto positive vote because I think you're, you're just, you're just hard on movies and that's it's it's just what my, that's just who I am. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's not a problem. It's, you know, it, oh, it, I'm, t- I tend to be easier on films than you. And what does it say that I also, you know, thought that <laughs> right, this movie right. was a little much, but, um, <laughs> 
Your point on subtlety in art, I think it's less, I think subtlety is the wrong word. I think um, there's two, there's two sides of this. There's what did the art, what did the artist, what did the author mean? Mm-hmm. And what did the reader, what did the viewer mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. receive? And those are right. two things. And and when you narrow in on very clearly what you wanted the viewer to receive, um, some people really love that. You know, some people don't want to have to have an active role in interpreting the art that they're watching. You know, like... Michael Bay films, unless you're, look, you're talking about it <laughs> in some like meta sort of uh, self-referential right, right. way, is there's nothing deep about his films. They're on the surface, like <laughs> like very very aggressively shot, aggressively written, fast, quick paced, loud, and people love those movies. And frankly, I sure. love like I watched Bad Boys two weeks ago, and I <laughs> love that movie. Oh, I think. the original. Yeah, dude, it's so good. Yeah, no, that's that's right. That's an awesome movie, right? I mean, <laughs> so so that movie at least is giving you just good and evil, right? Like, watch a World War II movie, and you're like, okay, yeah, I love the Allies. I hate the Nazis. Yeah, it's very right. Right. So so it's like, I think there's a place for it, but there is something. So when a movie is trying to be, this movie is trying to be very artistic, because the other side of this coin is. To me, what what effective art is, is when you set up artistic rules for yourself and then operate within those rules. It's like Mm -hmm. you avoid the blank paper, blank canvas effect by giving yourself rules. Like if you're going to be do a painting, you're going to say, I am only going to paint this thing with one brush and one color. Right. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly you you have to like you have to do some, you have to approach that piece of art differently. Mm -hmm, And that mm -hmm, tends to yield effective art because then your brain is not dumping everything on the page. So same thing with this movie, they operated on a very strict concept. This movie could have been a play, you know, I don't think any of the, ah, yeah, it could have, I'm I'm with you on that. And maybe it would have been more effective because we were tuned a different way with this movie. Like if it was a play, then you would have been, like it could have been a brutalist kind of uh like a well, waiting for a godot style like oh now that's what i want i oh my god that sounds so good to me right so to so, see this oh that sounds great now yeah uh-huh. yeah and so i think it's it's i don't it, I, I don't know what kind of point i'm trying to make here but no this, but i'm with you I'm this with you. movie forced us to think about it as a high concept piece of art and not as a blockbuster film um and in yes. a lot of ways, it succeeded. It was very beautiful. Um, yeah, it beautiful, looked good. Beautiful Great set. Way. Beautifully shot. But, like, the production uh-huh. design was incredible. The makeup work, the gore was incredible. Um, the set was the set was terrific. I, yeah. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I yeah, I think the problem is you had this sort of standard for it, and it was its fault. Usually you have a standard. It stand- was its fault. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Usually you yes. have a standard for a movie that I'm like, all right, settle down, Zach. But this time right. it this was is this trash and it's, fault. Right, right. It brought you along yes. into this The place. movie wanted to be taken very seriously, and it wanted to be... It wanted to be engaged with like like it was a piece of high art, like a high like I mean, you described it in the very beginning of the episode as a high concept film. And and if you're going for that, then you are asking for it, mister. You know, you're really you are really asking for it. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I think that 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 to me is, is sort of my interpretation of what your interpretation is, which is <laughs> which is that it it probably did connect with some journalists because it, it, this movie is a very brutalist movie it's like um i don't know if this if this if this concept was superimposed on another medium like a painting yeah. or a play or a book or a, or a piece of architecture like an architectural oh, style well, the ar- architecture exactly i mean like socialist modernist architecture brutalism i mean you're talking about it but like think like you could you could see this movie as a monument in Yugos, in the former Yugoslavia on a mountainside and it would be like really imposing and really big and really over the top. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so I think that is is a shortcoming and we, I, I think the po- the point is made there. It 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 feels like the medium is kind of wrong with this yeah. and and I don't really know what to say about that. Like um, right, I know it's a, it's a, those are those are always weird comments, but I'm I'm totally on board with you though. It's a stupid thing to say, really. Um, well, I, yeah, but but 
I mean, okay, sure. But also I would argue that everything that we have ever said is a stupid thing to say. That's true, um, including your main criticism of this movie so far. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but like I didn't need this movie to have so much over the like I didn't need this movie to be so gory and gross. No, I, yeah, we got it. We got it. Like right, even like, just uh, there's a comment you made on on uh, the last episode we did Eyes Without a Face where you uh-huh. I believe you said more movies need to rely on dialogue for their skills. Yes. And just imagination, just like, this, yes, let yes. the viewer, right, right. And this this movie did that a little bit. Like, I thought one of my favorite parts of this movie, and I really was had high hopes, was when Gorang was talking to his, his you know, overweight, uh, you know, late 50s cellmate at the beginning. Uh-huh, and, uh-huh. and he was sort of our, like, exposition man. I think his name was Trimagasi. Um, yeah, great name, yeah. Who kept saying obviously and, and <laughs> right? Well, that was like his catchphrase. Like I thought that, that was his catchphrase. That part of of this movie was incredible because there was nothing happening yet. Like you didn't. It was even, the best part of the movie. You didn't even you. know that he had a knife at that point, and he was talking about his old cellmate, and he was talking about how he got in here and all these things, and and your imagination for these moments was like so much more mm-hmm. effective than I think mm-hmm. having to show you so, literally somebody in, in this movie, in this movie, somebody shits on another person's face that <laughs> happened in this movie, which is like, <laughs> why did that happen? Like, <laughs> why did that need to happen? Yeah. happen? And I like had to stifle laughter when you said trickle down economics, because <laughs> that was like too much on the nose. There were literally moments where people were trickling pee down to <laughs> other and, people. Yeah. Like piss and shit over. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. Anyway, I think, I, I think, you know, meaning aside, you know, we could talk about like, um, when, uh, this reminds me a little bit of the lodge that that film we watched maybe three four episodes mm-hmm. ago, um, which again very able movie, very effective movie, with a message that I don't know why they were trying to tell me something, you know, and like mm-hmm. like like the message they were trying to say, it, it was it was just like so obvious what they were trying to say, and it was sort of the same thing with um, with relic, which I think you and I both really loved relic, but right. The message of Relic is like <laughs> Alzheimer's is bad and inevitable. Like, why are you <laughs> spending so much effort and time telling me that? I know that already. Like, right, and right, and you're right. not adding anything to the the discourse. So I I think that's the key with this movie. It didn't feel like it was really adding much to right the discourse. Right. It was just right, sort exactly. Of, it was like <laughs> the equivalent of somebody like drunkenly drunkenly grabbing the mic at a wedding like <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> and you agree with every, yeah. everything they fucking said but you're like why are you this is not your day <laughs> right like like right yeah or like right or like uh in the parking lot of a bernie sanders rally and like some drunk some like really drunk person is is ranting when you could just go inside and hear like the real thing right? yeah right yeah oh I, boy again so i think that I think we've harped on the negative. What I'd like to do is spend maybe like a, a quick five minutes talking about mm-hmm. what we liked. And, and there's a lot, there's a lot to like, I think we already briefly talked about the production and the, the cinematography was effective. Um, I thought the, um, the scenes where they're cooking the food was like, were, was very disheartening. Like they were, they were sort of like mimicking a, a tyrannical French kitchen, and a Gordon Ramsay style yeah, sort of, which I thought was right. really, really effective because, because you were, it, it was like, obviously the food was nice. It was on platters. It was whatever. Um, mm-hmm. but that moment showed you like, okay, these people are twisted in a certain way. Like they think they're doing something good for people, but really they're not doing anything. So right, right. Yeah, I thought those scenes were, were really good. I almost wanted to see more, <laughs> more scenes where they explored the workings of this restaurant and and let me pull some imagery out of that um mm-hmm. but the other thing that i really liked um well actually before i get it did you did you have anything that you wanted to uh throw into that mix or anything that you you really liked well you actually i think you actually took it i think you you found everything rec- to recommend about this movie already like i i i agree with you i thought the beginning of the movie was very promising um, I was intrigued 
right off the bat. Um, I mean, it only lasted about 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes or so, until mm-hmm. it, it, it begins to teeter on the rails, and it's not very long until it goes completely off of them. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, production-wise, I thought this was a really impressive movie. Um, it's, a, it's a debut film? Is it? Is it a first-time film? Uh, I th- let me double-check. It definitely... No. I thought it... No, it's not. Uh, well, directorial, perhaps, yes. This is a... The 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 guy's name is Galder oh, G- G- Gastelu Arusha Arusia. Right. Um, he he's what a pro- he's he a done? producer. He's done a lot of producing for. Um, okay, but it's a debut. Films. It's a debut film, and you know that's yeah. that's. I, I I thought that it was definitely an impressive looking film. Um, I liked yeah. our protagonist. I liked his acting well enough. Um, as Very you pointed capable. out, he I had mean, a- the protagonist was was the only one who's been in a film of note. In my opinion, I mean, all of these actors are true Spanish language actors, right. so they're not in we, American we, films. Right. Um, we didn't even. I mean, I, I don't even. I don't think it's even worth talking about. But I am so tired of like Jesus complex, like Messiah thing, like Messiah narratives. I mean, like, I, I don't. I am sorry, but this like white guy who comes in and sacrifices himself to save the world. Oh. So, no. well, no. this is interesting. It brings it to, to the last point that I wanted to, like, talk about what I really liked about this film. Um, by that point, when they start calling Goring the Messiah, mm-hmm. right? I had fully abandoned pulling, like, deep metaphorical meaning out of this movie. And... And I think there's a very clear point when it, when the movie forced me to do that, and that that's when he wakes up to his third roommate, um, mm-hmm. who I thought he was he was the best in this movie. Uh, in, yeah, I agree. An incredible actor. Um, I agree he, with that. Yeah. When he wakes up and this happens, and Bat- then, Bataran, Bataran, maybe yeah, I, yeah, I don't yeah, remember yeah, exactly. Yeah. His, well, I can get you the name in a sec. Um, what his, uh, his Baharat? Um, Baharat, Baharat. Yeah. So he. What happens in this part is the movie basically takes a severe U-turn and becomes a buddy cop movie. Like, yes, it in the third act of this movie, Baharat and Goreng decide that they have had enough and people are being too ridiculous and they need to bring their message down the whole shaft. They end up on level six, right? And Baharat is so excited because he gets to finally have a real shot at climbing out with this rope he brought which we didn't even talk about mm-hmm. the single item that people get to bring but um yeah but who cares <laughs> i don't think that, i don't even understand like the value of that um why yeah but i mean him eating the the copy of of don quixote was like also really on the nose for me so right <laughs> so, right i mean right. Li- literally eating literature that is telling him how to get through like mm-hmm. Uh, journey like i anyway um so this moment they decide rather than try to get out they're going to say all right we're on level six we can control so much of this food right now um Mm -hmm. nobody's going to listen to us but if we can ride this platform down to the bottom and give people their rations and defend it with our lives we can hopefully like show people that we can have some control back right which is the message Mm -hmm. of this movie and then they end up running into this like old wise man in a wheelchair halfway down and he tells he tells them like leave one of the ditches untouched and they decide that panna cotta is very beautiful and they're going to leave it untouched as a message to the Mm -hmm. kitchen that's the one right and that's where the panna cotta thing comes in all that's nonsense i'm like okay you you're trying really really hard now there's this like this prophet telling you what to do there's the literally like the panna cotta is the message is like you're talking about symbolism in the movie that is too ridiculously ham-fisted about its (laughs) symbolism like that's like (laughs) it, uh, it was too much for me and at that point i was like wait I don't even have to pay attention to that. I get to just watch Goreng and Baharat take this thing down and just like beat off attention, like, like beat zombies away from the platform. That's what it was. It turned into like almost a zombie buddy cop movie to me by the end. And I was like really excited to watch the third act because that's not what I was paying attention to anymore. I was paying attention to something that was really well paced. I thought, I thought the pacing of that scene was great. It was like a Mm -hmm. nice middle ground between montage and like, moments of them running into adversity um and i just thought that 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 
act was great, completely irrespective of what message the film was trying to give me, you know? Right, right. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. So anyway, uh, so I think we've, we've reached the point where we can, we can rate it. Is there uh, anything else you wanted to talk about? No, let's do the ratings. I'm, I'm ready for them. I, 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 uh, this whole time I've been trying to, uh, anticipate what you will give it. I mean, I, I think I know what you'll say for sheep, you know, for, for scary, for our scary rating, but, uh, um, sure. I'm, I'm very curious to know what you're, what you're going to say for, uh, for quality. So yeah, okay. let's do it. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's start with our scary rating, which is our sheep scale, AKA how many sheep you will need to count to fall asleep. We rate it on mm-hmm. zero to five with zero being, uh, a movie for toddlers and five being the scariest <laughs> film of all time. Uh, Zach, how many sheep you got here? Well, I was actually prepared to give it zero sheep, but it's definitely not a movie for toddlers. So <laughs> I will give it, I'll give it a single sheep. I think that I think the singular is a, a shop. So I'll give it one shop. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yeah. I think, I think one sheep is, is where I'm at on this too. It, it's definitely yeah. a very, very disturbing movie, but not in a way that I, it's not frightening. Yeah. It, it doesn't cling to you. It doesn't scare you. It doesn't make no. you you creeped out in bed it's so divorced it de- and so specific from real life that yeah it depends on how much gore uh will stay with you and like gross yeah. body body horror stuff like it, it doesn't stay with me because it just it's just not my particular you know boogeyman right so right, that, right. that yeah, stuff yeah. just yeah I think context right. is very important. We always talk about that with 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 scares, but I do think we should put a very strong disclaimer on this that if you oh, yeah. are grossed out by the concept of somebody cutting a strip of flesh from another person who's alive and eating it, then you should not watch this movie and it would be about or, 5 to 10 sheep for right. you. Or <laughs> or just kind of do what I do, which is when that's happening, you say to yourself, this is over the top and completely unnecessary and I'm not going to watch it. And yeah. you just don't like I, I I just don't like I turn my face away from the screen. I don't want to see that shit. It's stupid. It's just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so we arrive at one sheep, an average of one out of five sheep. Uh, Zach, what's your uh, what's your quality rating on this? This is, uh, again, zero to yeah. five with five being a masterpiece and zero being uh, being the platform at the bottom of the tower. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what's your rating there? Well, so I I actually slept on this. I tend to I tend to when I finish a movie, I know what I like. You know, I give it a star rating in my head almost immediately. Like it's usually pretty intuitive. It just kind of happens. Um, but this one though, I slept on it because I I and I, I think that you said as much at the beginning of our of this of this recording session that like it's a pretty good movie that you wouldn't recommend for a whole you know, a whole slew of reasons. Um, I found, I found a lot of things kind of unforgivable about this movie. Uh, we didn't talk about the ending and I don't want to talk about the ending. I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, gag myself. Um, but like, I thought this movie just completely bailed on itself three Zach, quarters of the way Zach, through. Zach, the, the children are our future. Oh God, I, I, so yeah, well, I mean, I'll leave, I'll leave it with what you just said. I, I arrived at two and a half stars after I slept on it. I, you know, I, and and the two and a half stars belong to the first 20 minutes of the movie and a pretty impressive, um, standard for production and set design and, you know, a couple of decent yeah. acting turns. Otherwise to me, it was a, it was a pretty, it was a pretty big flop of a film. So I give it two and a half stars. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I find this movie very hard to reconcile. If we had taken the first act as a as a play, like we said, and it mm. and, it and it, if it was just if it was just Trimagasi and Goreng, mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah, and uh, Miharu, the the Asian woman coming through on the platform, and then them yelling yes. at other like if they was just that, and then we sort of landed ambiguously, like. I maybe I would have liked it, and that's probably how a play would have been handled. Um, so yeah, I'm with you. I don't know. I think I you. I think I'm going to give it a three because it is a very capable movie. Um, I can see why people liked it. I do think it sure. deserves better than a fifty percent. Like this is what I was saying at the beginning. I think it is it, it this movie. If the message was less, everything that we talked about. 
messagey. I, I would have, yeah, <laughs> message with less messagey. I would have given it a four and a half. You know, like that's how mm-hmm. that's how capable I thought this film was, and right. So it just dra- you know it dragged it down one and a half stars for me basically. So I'm I think you. three. Yeah. I do think it deserves better than fifty percent because you know it's it's. It was just, it was not a movie that I, that I like looked at at the end as contrived and as, and as incapable and like some horror films, the movie just gets away from the director. You can feel it. Um, right. This movie felt like he had full control the whole time and perhaps that control was misguided, um, but he had control the whole time. So, right, um, right, right. Yeah, so it's, it's a three for me, and I and I, and I think it deserves a we, the average that it got was a two point seven five, and I think that's what it deserves. It deserves <laughs> just just above fifty percent for us because right, right, uh, again, right. it's not a bad movie. We neither of us could say it's a bad movie because that's know, right, that's right, that's so, right. Yeah, I I think that's a really nice place to land for a not very well, nice movie. So well, there you have it, folks. I dare say there you have it. <laughs> Well, thanks, Zach, for joining us along this ride. Um, and uh, thanks you, thank, thanks to you, listener. Uh, listener. Listener, multiple, exactly. Multiple. Well, you know, I, we are having individual conversations with each of our listeners. so That's true. That's true. It's very so, personal. That's right. Yeah. If you dig the podcast, be sure to check us out um, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. That's fear and there is our, uh, our handle there. And... Uh, you can uh, also drop us a rating on on spot on Apple Podcasts, not Spotify. They don't have ratings yet, but you know, follow us or drop us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts. That really helps us to to get recommended to future people and uh, let some friends know about the podcast. Um, let them know. We'd love to have some more listeners. We uh, we're having a lot of fun with this, and even if only two of you are listening, that's you know that's good enough. That's good enough for good us. Enough. So, uh, good enough. Thanks a lot, Zach. Thank you, listeners. Thanks, Jay. We will. Uh, it was a will, fun one. Yeah, we will talk to you guys next time. See you next time. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.